All right, well, I had 10 of my YouTubes on uh, Acts chapter 2 gone. And uh, I tried to replace three of them yesterday. I ran out of time and battery power. Uh, woke up in trepidation today. I don't know why I'm so anxious. You just do your best you can. And uh, the Lord, it's up to the rest, it's up to the Lord. Uh, but you'll be ready to repeat. I got up ready to repeat. Put up the other uh, seven. Of the ten that were missing, I did three, and I that all owed seven. I think are they keep taking them down. Every one of them was there except the last one I did, and I posted it again. And now we've got the entire Acts chapter two examination. Every part is critical because there's so much misinterpretation to this, and you could think you've lost your salvation or you didn't do enough because you're reading Acts chapter two and you're reading into it your position there, and you're just not there because you're not that old. You didn't live during the first century when this transition period was occurring. And we've gone into that. Uh, and we're looking back now. Isn't it amazing that Peter in Acts chapter 3 talked about Jesus no longer is going to imminently come into the kingdom right then and there in the first century. In Acts chapter 3 he says, no, no, it's not in hand anymore. He's going to stay in heaven until the time of restoration, until the time that he comes. And how many years have we seen from there? 2000 nearly 2000 years and when will he be coming again he'll be coming at the time of his decision for restoration at which time all of israel will believe in him almost in the clouds in his second coming and almost instantaneously all of israel that generation of israel which may exist today will be transformed into perfect human beings a little of, will live hundreds of years hundreds not just tens and they will have a perfect knowledge of the Bible. You won't have to teach them anything. They'll teach you. Even the most difficult passages, they'll know intimately well without asking even one another. Isn't that amazing? That hasn't happened yet. And it's still imminent because of awaiting God's prophecy that all of Israel, this is the new covenant, Jeremiah 31, Ezekiel 26, that all, I will sprinkle clean water on all of you, and you will be careful to keep all of my commandments, sinless perfection, and you'll know my words like the back of your hand. That's not happened yet. We've had the church age, Jews and Gentiles together as the body of Christ, to see if we can succeed. And guess what? We didn't. And if you read in between the lines, it's a mystery though, you read in between the lines as you read the Old Testament passages as it prophesies what historically will happen, we see that's a place for us. And it didn't succeed. And then God will fulfill through his promise through all of Israel. <clears throat> and they will be priests. We aren't the priests of Christ for uh, ruling over the earth, co-ruling with him over the, the families of the earth. We are a part of his body of Christ, his body, and will co-rule with him over the universe and supersede over all others after us, including the angelic beings and the the. Uh, perfect priests of Israel. So, I just listened to Charles Stanley on In Touch Ministries last Sunday and shuddered. I had heard more from him. I, he did a great uh, series of studies on the, uh, uh, eternal security years ago, and he had faith alone, it seemed. I don't remember it all that well now, so many decades. And he, now he tells us we have to do a number of things to be born again. First thing you have to do as must be born again, as repent. Well, that's not in John chapter 3. Jesus says, unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. And keep on reading. It says, believe. For God so loved the world that he gave his one only son, whosoever believes in him should never perish, but have everlasting life. And in John 1, 12 to 14, it says, as many as received him, that is to say, those to those that believed on his name. Again, simply faith alone, believed on his name, for the right to become children of God, born of God. You did not repent, and then you don't love Jesus enough. Uh, you have to love the children of God. You have to keep his commandments and all those. A number of things, I nearly fell off the chair there. And the chair is pretty low to the ground, fortunately. So this is what he read. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. This belief, it keeps going. And whoever loves the Father loves the child born of him. So you have to keep loving the Father. But this we know, by this we know, we love the children of God. So you have to love the children of God, I guess. It doesn't say that. 
when we love God and observe his commandments, and you have to observe his commandments. And then he added in a whole bunch, you have to pray all the time too. And otherwise you don't have eternal life. <clears throat> wow, how far are we falling? For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Well, if you keep his commandments, that doesn't mean you're not born again. How many of us can claim to keep all of his commandments, even for a moment, never mind a day or the rest of your life, in order to prove out that you're born again? Absolutely not. So let's go back to that passage and dissect it. I feel like jumping right through. I wanted to go through John, 1 John chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's the order to do it in. But this is such an urgent message. I've heard this a dozen times. I think God is telling me, address this point, please. So we're going to address this point, please. Bible study manuals. Go here. Click on the the picture. Look for J for First John chapter five. Scroll on down. I'm not precisely in alphabetical order here because first begins with the, the letters, the, the numbers of it. But I put it down under J O H N John chapter one First John. So all the way down here. We have the John chapters, and we have First John. Chapter 1, 2, and 3, 4, and here's 1 John chapter 5. So, it starts right off really bad for those who take uh, this preacher on television, Charles Stanley, seriously. He goes all over the Bible. First of all, you know that's wrong. You don't cherry pick and throw slam things together. The love of God and his commands are very important to the born-again believer as to grow to Christ as Christians. Let's just read it. For if someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, notice I'm going back to 4.20 because the context <coughs> goes from there upwards to 5.1. He is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Does that, does that mean he's not a, a believer? No, there's some believers, especially when you become a born-again believer right off the bat, you have a lot of work to do. And this commandment we have for him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. That doesn't mean you're not a born-again believer. Whoever believes, <coughs> whoever is the believing one, literally, that Jesus is the Christ, has been born of God. Okay, that's all it asks you to do. It doesn't say you have to love his commandments also. So you don't read into this verse. And whoever loves, whoever is the one who is loving, the father, the one who gave from birth to him, loves the child having been born of him. Okay. <clears throat> By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and observe His and do His commandments. Do we have to do all these things in order to be born again? Moment to moment to moment, I would say no. I'm not giving evidence that all the time. Especially when I go to sleep or I get angered. But this is the love of God. This is the love of God. This is not proof that you're saved, that we keep His commandments and His commandments are not burdensome. Yes, and how long does it take a, a believer to demonstrate even a moment here or there that they love God. Moments here and there. That doesn't disprove the fact that, that you're a believer. Because whatever has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory, the one which did overcome the world. Notice our faith, the fact that we believed in him, automatically gives us an overcoming of the world. We've overcome the world because God has promised through the indwelling Holy Spirit when you believed in the gospel, to bring you to the final state of redemption, a resurrection, perfect resurrection body, which has overcome the world. Right now, the world is overcoming me in this pandemic and everything else. I have to deal with this. I'm so distracted all the time. People are walking right up to you from behind. But yesterday, one guy wants to talk to me, and I turn around and said, could you, could you stay back for six feet? And I thought the guy was going to punch me out. Well, what are you walking up at me? He wants to sell me a bus pass. I said, I have a bus pass. I thought he was going to turn and punch me got so close and I kept stepping back. He got angry because I'm trying to keep my own safety uh, spot. Anyway, let's look at this verse by verse. We've read enough that's disturbing. But you go back to 1 John 4:20. If a child of God, born of God, says, I love God and hates his brother in the faith, he is a liar. He doesn't say he's not a born of God. He's still a child of God. For a child of God, born of God, who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, he cannot love God with that same agape, godly, self-sacrificial love as God loved us when he gave up his one and only son whom he has not seen. It, it just, 
explains our experiential status in this born-again life once we became born again. You have to, it's a work in process. So, we have some manuscript evidence to look at. We can, you can look at that uh, later. <clears throat> There's nothing new being said, just a little bit of a variance. Uh, we can figure out which is superior and which is not. Sometimes the scribe goes around and says, I can, I can improve the way this was written. It's, it's arrogant, but it's there. And we're, we're left with this manuscript evidence and description, and, uh, discrepancies amongst the manuscripts and the copies, the versions, New, New King James Version, New American Standard, King James Version. They're all great translations, but none of them is perfect. So there's no difference, though, in, in any case. And if we do our homework, we find, by and large, 99.9% .9 of the time, these discrepancies can be figured out and nothing... When, uh, nothing really has uh, changed in the Word of God. We can pretty much figure out what the original words were. So, in John 1 John 4, 20a, the phrase rendered, If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar, has in view children of God born of God. That's the context. This is not a test to determine if one is saved unto eternal life or not. You hear that, Charles Stanley? As some contend, for unbelievers do not have brothers in the faith in Jesus Christ in the first place. Hence, only believers are in view in this case. Furthermore, children of God, born of God, cannot claim to be without sin. 1 John 1, 8 and 10. So if you say, oh, I love everybody. And I've heard this said. Really? Moment to moment, 24-7 for the rest of your life in order to prove out your salvation? I'd go to bed that night horrified that I would lose it somehow in my dreams. So believers, in other words, children of God, born of God, do have the capacity to hate their brothers and still remain saved unto eternal life. Because you got it by faith alone in Christ alone forever. At the moment of faith, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit as a guarantee of your final redemption. Ephesians 1, 13-14. Still, they remain as children of God, born of God. 1 John 2, 25 says that as well. Let's take a look at that. I love my own references because I've done my homework. 1 John 2, 25. 1 John 2. You go, when you look at 1 John 5, you have to remember, you better have mastered... 1 John 1, 2, 3, and 4, before we go into this. So I'm taking a shot here. This is the promise which he himself made to us, eternal life. Okay, oh, well, but you didn't love me last night. You had a funny kind of a dream, and you, it was kind of hateful. No, nope. you wake up, you're not born again. You have to go all over again. Christ is going back on the cross, die for all those sins that you just committed. Oh, no, he died for everybody's sins, even Hitler's. The sins are paid for. Uh, is Hitler forgiven? No, because he never expressed faith alone. Never expressed faith at all. Okay. We go back to this. 1 John 2.25 says he's promised. Is God going to renege on his promise? No matter what you do? No. You're a child of God. Can you get on child? No. Hence, if a child of God, born of God, says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. And is not expressing an agape, godly, self-sacrificial kind of love for God at all. It's a work in process. We have a lot of work. Some things you think you're doing, it's okay. It's neutral. No, it's hateful. If you're not self-sacrificial, you're indifferent, that's hateful. Does that mean you're not a believer? No. Most of us have those opportunities and take advantage of them, and we shouldn't. The opportunity to hold back and study God's Word and take your mind out of the uh, temporal and put it into the eternal. Since God first expressed the agape, godly, self-sacrificial love for all mankind, 1 John 2, 2, 3, 14, 18, John 3, 16. Wow. Among other things, the key example of how children of God, born of God, are, are to conduct themselves toward God and with one another, and although the expression of agape, godly, self-sacrificial love does not demand an, an emotional attachment toward one another, I was told the other day I wasn't saved because I didn't have enough emotional love in my heart for him. I was getting angry because he kept telling me I'm going to hell because I didn't, I didn't express my, the gospel through my heart. I said, well, I did. I wholeheartedly believed in my mind. He says, that, you're not saved. Wow, really? What does it say for God to love the world if he gave his one only son? Whosoever believes with his whole heart. It doesn't say it, it just believes. What does the word believe in the dictionary mean? Except it's true. Mental assent. Well, the dictionary is wrong. Noah Webster wasn't a, a Christian. Well, but how do you understand what believe means except by the use of language? 
and everybody has a common understanding of how words are used, otherwise we can't talk to one another. But, you know, some highly religious people don't talk.